Today I'm going to talk to you about using deformers for modelling in Maya. So the great thing about deformers is that they can be a really quick way of prototyping different versions of a model, but they can also be a legitimate way of modelling more tricky shapes. The first thing to note when using deformers is that you need to make sure that the object you're going to be applying them to has enough subdivisions. If there are no divisions in your model, then the deformer is not going to be able to do its job. But something like this, it's still a relatively light model, but we're going to be able to get some really interesting shapes using the deformer. The next thing to point out is that I have modelled this in separate pieces and I can either choose to add a deformer to an individual object, I could select multiple objects or the easiest thing that I'm going to do is just grab my whole group. To add a deformer you will go up to the top and go to deform, non-linear and we have a list of deformers here. For this example I'm going to start with the flare deformer and when you add that you will notice you get something called a handle in the outliner. This is how you select it in your outliner and you'll also see a visual representation of the nonlinear deformer in your viewport. Now this will vary depending on the deformer you've chosen. Um, for this flare we have a circle at the top a line through the middle and a circle at the bottom and I'll talk to you about what those represent in a second. To access the deformers controls with your deformer selected you can either go to the channel box and this input or if you want to see the full attributes you can come to the attribute editor. Each deformer has different set of attributes that you can edit. The first two attributes that we're going to look at are the start flare X and Z. This is visualized by the bottom circle and this is called the start point and this allows you to adjust in the X and in the Z axis how much we're getting a flare. The other way to edit this is if you select your flare handle and press T it brings up what's called the manipulator tool and we can actually grab these little points and use those to adjust interactively in the viewport. And I've pushed the flare more in Z and squashed it in X, so you'll notice that whereas before we started with a perfect circle, we're still getting that visual representation, what we've done with those start flare values. And then the end flare is the same, but for the top circle here, so we can do a similar thing where we can push this value here or we can push it actually in here, we can type the value in, we can do it in the channel box as well. So multiple ways to do that. If you want to get rid of this manipulator tool, you don't want to use it, you can just press Q and then you can also go into your move, rotate or scale tool as well. The next attribute is my favourite attribute, the curve attribute. It is so quick to add convex or concave curve to objects. It really does add some great stylization. You may notice that when you use the curve tool, you can notice some faceting if your mesh is fairly low poly, so I would just press 3 and turn smooth mesh preview on and then I get some really nice curves there. The next values are the low and high bound. So these are represented by the circles. So the low bound is the bottom circle and we can push that further down and we can bring it closer in. Now what it doesn't do is affect the actual flaring of the object. The flaring is still the same regardless of whether it's above or below this low bound, but what it does is it affects the curve. So if we push them both together, you'll see that we get a much tighter curve there. The next thing to look at is this attribute here. So the envelope, that is how much this is having an influence. So you can have set it and I've gone quite extreme and I might think actually I just want to tone it down a little bit 
and now I'm happier with that. And so I can just use this envelope to change the overall shape. And then we can also here see all of our geometry listed and we can change fall offs as well. I don't generally think for a beginner you need to worry too much about this, but this one is really handy. This is the manage deform geometry. So with this, you can either add selected geometry or you can remove it. So if I select this and go to remove selected geometry, obviously I wouldn't actually want to do that, but that has now removed it and it's gone exactly back to what it was. So let's just go and add um, that back in. <laughs> the next thing that I want to talk about is we can actually just physically move the deformer and we can get a, a different look to what we had. We can move it forwards and backwards. So we can very quickly just play around with not just the deformer attributes itself, but actually how you position this deformer and the same goes for all of the deformers. So let's say that we're happy with this as a new prototype and we want to save it. There's two ways you can do it. You can select your object and go to edit, delete, or type history. If you do that, that's just going to remove the deformer. There is now no influence on this and your mesh has just been saved in its new shape. But if I just undo that and bring the deformer back, what I actually prefer to do is just grab my bookcase, press Control D to duplicate, and I now have a version that, if I go and move this deformer, isn't actually affected. So we now have this version, and what I would then do is just group my deformer and bookcase and hide it and save that for later, just in case I want to come back and edit that at any point. That is really the basics of using a deformer. Rather than me sit and show you each deformer in turn, I think the best thing is if you go and just apply those and play around with them. But I do have some more tips for you. I think they are super important. Let's grab the next bookcase. I wanna talk about layering our deformers. So let's go and add another non-linear deformer. This is a bend deformer. We have a visualization in the viewport, which is just a line at the minute. And we have only three on here. One of them is curvature. So this curving, bending your object. And currently it's kind of not bending in the way that I would hope. So I'm just going to physically, as I talked earlier, don't forget that you can physically move your handle. And so now I'm getting a curve like this. And again, we have a low bound. I don't really want it to actually, I want it to sit on the floor still. So I'm gonna turn the low bound to zero. And now my bend is just happening from zero up to one, which is the high bound. And again, I'm gonna just come in and turn the curvature down a bit. I actually think I want it to curve the other way. That would be more handy for a bookcase, wouldn't it? And something like this. So I'm kind of happy with how that bend is happening, but I want to also alter the shape. So I can just grab my bookcase again, go to deform, non-linear, and I'm gonna add a flare again. And um, I can now start to flare and add curvature between the flare and bring it that way and that way. And so now I've got a very wonky bookcase. I think layering the deformers can really help you to create some even more interesting shapes by stacking them on top of each other. And then I just wanted to talk about the lattice tool. So this technically isn't a non-linear deformer, but it's also really helpful. So if we go to deform again and choose the lattice, this is something that you can use and you can also add the non-linear deformers and the lattice together. We'll do a separate tutorial on the lattice tool, but I just want to show you 
very quickly so that you can also utilize this. This allows you to adjust the number of lattice points. Okay, so again, you don't need to go crazy because then it's going to be really hard to adjust. Um, but it allows you to change them and then you can grab your lattice points and you can adjust them um, and you can create some really interesting shapes by scaling um, you can um, rotate so really useful for adding slight wonkiness and these differ from the non-linear deformers because you do have a bit more control so here we go and we can very quickly create some interesting shapes I've just hidden the lattice tool so you can see a bit clearly what the shape is doing but we've now created something it, once you're happy with this you can either delete the history or we can just duplicate the bookcase and have a version that is no longer being used with the lattice tool. The other thing I just want to quickly point out is that the deformers were originally created for animation so they used to not even be visible in the modeling context menu until fairly recently you used to have to go to animation to get to them. So I just want to note that everything, every attribute can be keyframed and animated and so you can also add some stylized animation using these deformers if you weren't already aware of that. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below.